Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is um, a webinar today talking about what we believe is the best event investment in aquatic venues. So whether it's a water park or a pool, any kind of aquatic venue, uh, we are going to talk today about the benefits of adding an aluminum retractable roof. We are going to cover the top four issues that are faced by water parks and aquatic venues. Those four issues are air quality, corrosion, energy savings, and cost. And we're gonna talk about how an aluminum retractable roof can eliminate all four of these issues. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Nancy Patterson. I am the design and business director uh, development director from Open Air and Open Air has been in business for about 30 years. We have about a thousand projects around the globe and joining me today is my special guest and expert in aquatics, all things aquatics. Uh, this is Daryl Matsky. It's great to be here Nancy. Uh, of course I enjoy talking about aquatics <laughs> and that it's, it's it's, it's a great industry to be part of. My name is Darren Motsky. I'm with Raymaker and Associates. We're an architectural and engineering firm uh, located in Wisconsin and have had the opportunity for uh, working with aquatic facilities for over 25 years. Thank you. Awesome. And we actually uh, work together on the project you can see on the screen right now. So first and foremost, air quality. Um, I'm going to let uh, Daryl speak to this, but basically when you open the roof and open the walls, you naturally ventilate your building. So you bring in a very large volume of air, uh, which means that you can reduce your reliance on mechanical ventilation. So Daryl, as the expert in all things aquatic and mechanical ventilation and aquatic ventilation, um, perhaps you can share your thoughts on this. Uh, yes, I'd love to, love to do so. One of the things that uh, I, I recognize as a need is working as a team uh, with uh, experts in the industry, whether it's civil engineers, mechanical engineers, like architects. And with today's discussion on air quality, so important the mechanical engineering aspects of uh, operating of, a, of an indoor aquatic facility. Mm -hmm. If the air is bad, guests are not comfortable, mm -hmm. the operators are not comfortable, uh, there's damage done to the building and a way of working around that is natural ventilation and that's what an operable roof system provides. Absolutely. And can be applied to really any kind of entertainment facility, right? I mean, we're just talking about bringing in fresh air. It doesn't have to be aquatic, although there's the additional benefit in an aquatic venue of exhausting all the chloramines. The chloramines is that chemical smell in the air. And as, as somebody who spends a lot of his time going to water parks and uh, any kind of aquatic facility, you know, what, what have you heard from operators about the issues of chloramines in an aquatic venue? Well, the first thing is what it, uh, how it turns away the guests. Mm -hmm. It's when you walk into that venue, uh, you're at the lobby. Mm -hmm. You're not in the pool area and you smell the chlorine. Right. That's not a good smell. It's much worse in the, in the, <laughs> inside uh, uh, in the pool area. Sure. Then the next thing that occurs is how it impacts the uh, uh, lifeguard staff. The staff is in there all the open hours. And right. it, it really uh, wears on them. And if they have any weakness at all in their lungs, uh, it, it's just, just not a good setting. And therefore, we have to figure out a way to help alleviate that situation in a cost-effective manner. Sure. And then, of course, you know, we can also talk about the fact that uh, aquatic venues, and water parks in, in particular, are designed to standards that are um, seem to be, I think, a little insufficient um, because of the amount of spray in the air, right? Yes. The essence of aquatic facilities goes back 50, 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was uh, the indoor natatorium, the high school pool, the competition pool. Mm -hmm. and we to indoor aquatic centers, uh, the YMCAs, and a, and a little bit more play features of the aquatic centers that we're seeing recently uh, with activity pools and uh, uh, spray features. Right. Take this to the next level of the indoor water park uh, with wave pools, surf machines. You're really aerating the water, uh, right. which is, leads to evaporation and humidity. And surf machines are really a really big <laughs> issue here, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah very much so. <laughs> lots of spray. So fun, but lots of spray. Mm -hmm. 
So the conversation today is particularly timely with the pandemic that every single person around the globe is dealing with. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has, has taken the world, um, you know, by the shoestrings and we've all had to learn to adapt. And ironically, this feature of adding a retractable roof to a facility, um, you know, exhausting all of that air and not using the mechanical system when the roof is open, um, actually is a very interesting solution to a problem, almost an accidental, accidental solution to a problem, um, whereby, you know, there are studies saying that it's just simply safer to be um, outside, you know, so, um, and what we're talking about really are those large, large volumes of air that allow you to ventilate a space. Again, any kind of space, any kind of thematic space. Um, but in particular, in this case, what we're talking about is water parks and, you know, uh, reducing the transmission of airborne viruses. Um, any thoughts on that, on how, on the replacement of the mechanical ventilation system with a natural ventilation system? Yes, this, this picture is uh, really, really shows what can occur here. You can see that uh, approximately 50% of the roof is open. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it has a feeling of an outdoor water park as opposed to an indoor water park. Right. And not visible because of the play structures that are uh, at, this, uh, at this facility are the uh, open sidewalls. Right. Uh, whether it's doors, sliding glass doors, or uh, tilt windows, the end result is what you're trying to do is bring the fresh air in naturally at mm -hmm. the deck level, and that's where the majority of the people are, mm -hmm. at the deck le level where the need is and where the chloramines and the humidity hangs out. Sure. Let the fresh air come in through the sidewalls, flush that area out, and then naturally uh, rise out uh, through the roof uh, through a chimney effect. Right. And then I guess in addition to that, you know, we're not showing it here, but at the top of any kind of a slide tower or anything like that, anywhere that, that traditionally air would rise to, if we can open the roof up there, there's, there's some benefits there, right? So yep. um, our next slide talks about the other, you know, another big issue faced by um, specifically water parks. So if you're an indoor dry entertainment venue, you're probably not going to have this issue quite as much but certainly in a water park corrosion is a major major factor so i know that you get asked to go into water parks existing water parks do some assessments and um take a look around the space and sort of see what the issues are um, maybe you can talk to some of the issues that you that you find when you go to water parks and aquatic venues there's many, <laughs> but the case <laughs> focus is on uh, the building structure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with uh, indoor water parks evolved in the uh, mid to late 1990s, so there's been almost 25 years of watching the evolution of, of a water park, and that has just been a great opportunity uh, to see uh, the effect of the, of, the, of the environment we're creating inside, the humidity, the chloramines, and that. And, and where the issues have come up is a deterioration, uh, whether it's surface corrosion, which is an aesthetic issue, or surface corrosion when it's not maintained leads into a, a structural issue, mm -hmm. or maybe it's even a corrosion that is hidden because a vapor barrier was installed improperly mm -hmm. and the humidity uh, passes through the uh, wall section and condensates where it's not observed, uh, resulting in corrosion of the structure uh, mm -hmm. or the roof system, or there could be mold also that leads to sure. it. And yeah. so you have numerous items that come up uh, leading to either failure or maintenance issues mm -hmm. and uh, potentially health issues with the mold. Seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that I, I, in fact it's incorrect installation in most cases um, of vapor barriers or whatever that really is the brunt of a lot of these issues down the road for for a traditionally constructed building. Is is that a true statement? Or yeah, yes, it is. But it also comes from the uh, uh, the. the ability of the project team, starting from uh, the operator or the owner, pulling the correct team together to the operator, uh, but also with the design side. Uh, this, is, this should not be designed like an office building. <laughs> design it for what it's being used for, and that comes down to an experienced uh, architectural team, design team, and right. engineers, and then on the construction side, having the uh, experience on knowing how to install it properly, the vapor barrier properly. Correct, yeah. 
And then of course, you know, in addition to, um, it, certainly in the case of an aquatic venue, in addition to the sort of corrosion from the inside, uh, depending on your location, you may experience corrosion from the outside, depending on where you're located. I picked this photo just because, you know, it shows clearly a salty beachfront location, which happens to be on the ocean and, and beautiful. Uh, this one happens to be in San Diego, California. But um, in this case, the building suffers from uh, the effects of both the external geography and climate, as well as the internal effects of the of the uh, cor uh, the, the corrosion from the from the chloramines. So what we're talking about today is, is when you put on this retractable roof and bring in this big volume of air, building it out of aluminum, um, you know, you get the large fans that you need for, for a water park or a, a ride or attraction of any kind, you know, you need to be able to span column free up to a couple hundred feet. Um, but then also, you know, aluminum is a naturally non-corrosive material. So maybe you can talk a little bit about um, some experience that you've had in putting a retractable roof on a on a facility but making it out of aluminum yes uh the the, the spanning aspect is a is a great benefit <laughs> it's just a little bit cumbersome having the uh, columns come up in the middle of the mm -hmm. pool basins um but from the maintenance side the uh the the aluminum structure comes pre-coated mm -hmm. and so you're not repainting it uh it's not corrosive so you're not getting uh surface rust stains Mm -hmm. uh, continuing with the non-corrosiveness, it's not getting to uh, evolve into a structural issue, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that if it did, you have to shut your park down. Right. Uh, hopefully you can do it on a shoulder season, but the end result is uh, potential lost revenue and the uh, impact on your operation. Right. Uh, I love this next photo here <laughs> because uh, <laughs> showing one of the most important aspects uh, uh, of an aquatic facility is the roof. Yeah. And uh, with the humidity ri rising in the uh, traditional uh, constructed facility, uh, there has been quite a few, more than a few instances where uh, the roof structure has uh, been damaged over time uh, due, due, due to corrosion and it's required replacement of a roof. Right. Now, flying over this, uh, I, I had to think of the, the pilot as I exited the plane because it was like, Oh wow! <laughs> that, I know that project. I know that project. <laughs> uh, yes. uh, but it it, it kind of drives home the point of how exposed. I mean, there's sixty thousand square foot of sure. uh, of roof structure. And you don't want to be replacing it. <laughs> no, and if I mean. The other thing is just access, right? I mean, how do you replace the roof of a building, you know, if, if it's over slides and a wave pool and all sorts, all that fun stuff that's to, in a traditional water park or whatever, it's a, it's a complicated thing to do. So if you're having to do it every seven to 10 years, as seems to be the norm, certainly in the water park field, um, boy, that's an expensive, um, that's an expensive project, isn't it? So if you, if yeah. you do have to do it, you only want to do it once, you know? <laughs> so. Right, and then you'll look at it and say, man, is there a better way? Or right. How, how's right. a different way of approaching this? Sure. So that kind of brings us a little bit to our next issue that is faced by water parks, which really is energy savings. Um, as we all know, uh, you know, building codes around the world, generally, in <laughs> summarizing obviously say use less energy that's just the way that the, that the world is evolving it's um, the right thing to do <laughs> exactly and so um when you open the roof you you do do that you for all intents and purposes you turn off your building which is a which is a, a different approach to um construction and so for somebody like yourself you know how, what are the things you do need to do so you know you've turned off the building you've turned off your mechanical system but of course you still need to have a mechanical system you yes. still need to potentially heat it or whatever. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that uh, specifically for water parks. You know, it's, it's, it's not that you, you might, you probably don't install air conditioning because on the hot days, you're going to open the roof. But other than that, yeah. what? When, 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 the, when the weather's nice, people want to be outside. But reflecting back uh, to, uh, to one of the earlier photos, uh, uh, the water park facility uh, along the beach, you know, water parks aren't always along the beach. We have them in the northern climates too. And sure. therefore, we do have to have a robust mechanical system uh, to handle uh, all, all ranges of weather type. And with the uh, uh, aluminum retractable roof systems, uh, roof structures, we've been able to design those facilities uh, to work well, very well in all climates. Mm -hmm. uh, but you still have to have the mechanical systems there because there will be times that 
hey, it's zero degrees. <laughs> what are you going to do? But one of the things that's interesting about it is talking to the operators and the feedback from the operators on say how they learn their building. Mm -hmm. You know, as as uh, weather changes, whether it's season to season or even the over the course of the day in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, it's chilly in the morning, but the sun is coming out from the east and it's warm in that side of the building mm -hmm. versus later in the day when it gets much warmer. Uh, they're able to operate their roof system and open it a little bit, open a little bit further, open it fully, maybe start closing a little bit as the day goes on uh, to uh, essentially control uh, the environment uh, with right. it. And that's a lot less expensive to flip a switch on a few motors to open than to have a uh, uh, air handling unit fan uh, running th okay. throughout the day. Right. right. And of course, another big um, savings that you will find is, of course, when you have a, a translucent or transparent, typically translucent um, at this scale, um, big skylight. And when it's open, certainly, um, you bring in an awful lot of daylight. And daylight has been proven to um, improve productivity. Um, there's some very interesting studies about the direct correlation between retail revenue, the amount of money people spend when they're in a daylit space versus the amount of money that they spend if they're in, you know, a, a dark box with, with yes. just, uh, you know, electrical lighting. So, um, it's, and it's then- comfort level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. If the uh, if the uh, patrons are uh, guests are comfortable, they want to spend time there. They want to right. return. Sure. Uh, increase revenue generation that way. Uh, sure. This 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 looks like an outdoor setting. Right. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. It was a beautiful day. Which of course, then you know, in in general, between you know, quote unquote, turning your building off, turning your daylights off, um, you know, of course, emergency lighting stays on. But uh, you know, when you're only operating the equipment within the space as opposed to the building itself, you know, you're you're reducing your overall emissions. So there's there's some significant benefits there. And and um, while these buildings, you know, have the, a little bit of the aesthetic of you know a big old greenhouse. Um, they really do um, have the ability to contribute to uh, energy codes and, and reduced energy emissions. So there's some, there's some nice benefits there. Um, and so this is a nice picture that I like to show because I think, you know, what we're really talking about when we're talking about uh, converting this building into a space that, um, you know, natural events itself that it, where the, all the daylights, you know, they, the lights are off, the fans are off. I mean, you can see in this photo, you know, it's the middle of the day, the place is busy, um, but everything is turned off. I think, you, you know, what we've talked about, and I think it's called the stack effect, is where you, you bring in, as you mentioned earlier, air in from the sides and it goes up and out of the roof and, you know, the building really ventilates itself, right? Like that's the... Correct, we correct. Uh, in, in this photo, yes, you, you see the ceiling fan up there, the large ceiling mm -hmm. fan uh, to move great volumes of air, but that's, that's just a, a belt and suspenders approach to make sure uh, right. that the facility is comfortable at all times. What we're really working towards is when can we allow the facility to run naturally? Yeah. And that is opening the doors and the windows uh, mm -hmm. and the rooftop uh, for uh, sure. the outside air. Sure. And, you know, what's interesting, and I think we've talked about this a couple times, is that it's surprising, I think, to owners and operators how much they open the roof. I think there's an expectation that you'd only use a building like this in a beautiful, hot, sunny climate on a beautiful, hot, sunny day, um, whereby, in fact, that might not be the case. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that, um, about yeah. how operators learn to use the building, but but relative to the time of year and the climate. A a absolutely, it's uh, we we I've been involved in projects where the uh, this structure has been installed in very northern climates at a ski right. resort. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, when it was winter there, it's not just winter. It's it's a hard winter. <laughs> it's winter. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and what an oasis uh, the, uh, the, the, this structure provides because of the, all the daylighting you get. But what was really interesting is that day I went out skiing and it was cold. And I was really glad to return uh, to the water park. And uh, I looked at the roof and it was cracked open. And I go, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It can. There was enough solar gains. 
right. um, during the day that it really, uh, they, 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 they open the roof during the winter just to allow some uh, fresh air to ventilate. Sure. The natural ventilation uh, worked all seasons. Right, right. Because it's not all or nothing, right? You don't have to, this, this photo obviously shows it fully open, but you don't have to open it all the way. So, um, so, you know, what that does, all those three things that we've kind of talked about, those three major pain points for, um, for uh, water parks and any kind of uh, commercial venue, um, is cost, both cost savings and revenue opportunities. So um, I'll, I'll let you talk through the, um, uh, some of the cost savings element of this when you turn off your systems. So um, yep. perhaps you can speak a little bit to the turning off the mechanical systems, which you <laughs> have so wonderfully designed and put in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we have a team of people uh, and someone else in the office designed some mechanical uh, and I'm, I'm very happy they're there to do so. Yeah. But what I look at it and say about the mechanical system, I say, goodness gracious, does it have to be that big? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the air handling units at uh, indoor water parks are uh, tractor trailer size units or uh, multiple. Yeah. Uh, trailer size units. Uh, yes, they use a lot of energy. They use the energy uh, with the fan motors. They use the energy with the pumps. Uh, usually, use uh, moving uh, hot water or glycol system around. It all costs money to run it, mm -hmm. and that's it's heat, it's gas, it's natural gas, it's right. uh, electricity. Pull that back. Try to get the building to operate naturally. Learn your building. That's what the staff are able to do. And yes, they find savings throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've got lots of studies that show that actually the savings are, can be up to about 30%. It's a pretty big number, especially for a water park. Um, and then, you know, in a, in the, the other side of that cost equation is the revenue opportunities that it creates. If you've got a facility, I'm sorry, that's my shaking dog. If you've got a facility that can be open, um, uh, year round, of course, you use it about the, the retail revenue opportunities. Oh, we've got something happening with our sound here. Um, yep, you're back now. If we have a, 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 a space that is, um, you know, healthy and fresh and you don't feel, you know, like you're getting a cold every time you go, of course, you've got the, the repeat uh, visitation factor. Um, in addition to that, we can talk about uh, if you add one of these retractable roofs, if you build out of aluminum and you build out of a, a type of product that is partially constructed in a warehouse, in other words, these trusses and these roof trusses are assembled and, and welded, et cetera, et cetera, in a warehouse and then shipped to site and simply put together on site, they are not built on site. There are significant cost savings when it comes to the speed of construction. And I use this particular photo here because it's a very large enclosure and you can really obviously see the, the change over a two week period of, uh, you know, how quickly this building goes into place. So, of course, it's not something that you don't, you're not building a 62,000 square foot water park in two weeks. But I think that the, the point is that the uh, speed of construction when you have pre-assembled pieces, even though they are custom designed for your environment, your geography, the speed of construction is very, very, uh, very good and very fast. So, um, and then- in one, one of the things with that is uh, quality control. Right, the, the right. Quality control that occurs in the fabrication so then it can be delivered to the site right. uh, uh, without uh, with limited, you know, no, essentially, I've never seen any field modifications uh, yeah. to the structure. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, maybe they hit it well. No, the end result is the quality of, of the product right. And, right. and the construction crew. It's a right. team. Right. And then, of course, you know, uh, we alluded to this a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, again, a year round environment, a place that is open every day, no longer suffering from the, the effects of Mother Nature. <laughs> um, really in any kind of a venue, whether it's a water park, an aquatic facility, or, you know, a theme park, a restaurant, a hotel, doesn't matter. You, you know, if you have to return money because somebody couldn't have their event, that's, that's not a good thing. So uh, <laughs> nobody likes that. No operator in the world likes that. Every day is a good day. Exactly, exactly. And then I guess the last thing we just wanted to touch on was the was the marketability of a space like this. Being able to say that you are the first 
place with a retractable roof in your town, city, state, uh, you know, province, whatever it is, um, is, is uh, something that you can market. And, you know, I love this photo of this little guy in the ski resort you talked about earlier, you know, walking off the ski slopes into this place. And just, I mean, that it, this picture is from their marketing team. So it, this does it all, I think, right there. Um, uh, we, we've all been there or at least witnessed it if we've gone skiing <laughs> and seeing uh, the family on the verge of a breakdown right. because uh, it's <laughs> cold. cold or the snow's not good or some, sure. something is disrupting it. And uh, 20 minutes ago, we do not know uh, what this child was thinking, but we know what this child is thinking now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's never a bad day. Absolutely. And then the last thing just to touch on is this idea of being green. Um, you, you know, by virtue of adding a retractable roof, you have created a naturally environmentally more efficient space. Um, you know, whether you choose to use that as your marketing tool or not, or simply to create an oasis in a place where that doesn't exist. This particular project is in Germany. And from to my, to my knowledge, there are no palm trees in Germany. <laughs> so um, whether you're physically creating a green space or marketing it as an environmentally friendly, you know, energy efficient space, uh, you know, obviously that's up to you and your project, but it's, um, the ability to do that is is a lovely experience to create an oasis in in a place where that might not exist, right? And the and the green space here uh, softened the room. Natatoriums and water parks are so loud. It's so loud, just yeah. the, the the construction material that exists here and the water surface reflecting the sound, having mm -hmm. having trees grow naturally uh, in there because uh, because the translucent panels allow it to do so. Uh, right. It just is another benefit for this type of roof system. Right. So then I thought we would just walk through a couple of the really big questions that we get all the time when we're talking about a retractable roof. If you are starting new, obviously no brainer. If you're not and you already have a project, you already have a theme park, a water park, a, any kind of an entertainment venue, can you add a retractable roof? So the short answer is yes, you can. The long answer is it's a little more complicated than that. We need to take a look at your facility. We need to look at your structure. We need to um, see if there's any uh, repair that needs to be done to the existing structure. Maybe we need to add an additional new substructure. There's a whole bunch of questions totally dependent on your situation. But what I wanted to show here was this photo on the left and the right of a, uh, a retractable roof that has been added to um, a water park in an existing older building. And literally the old uh, roof was torn off and the existing glue lamb structure, which was in very good condition, was maintained, that, that's their existing structure. And a new retractable roof was simply added on top. So it can be done. It's, it's not as simple as, yeah, absolutely, we can do it on every building, but, um, but it kind of is. It's, this is the, this is the uh, natural ventilation 101 is, is having a retractable roof. So it can be done. So. Yes, just bring the engineer in. We'll take yes, a look at it. Exactly. And, and it was wonderful to see that this structure uh, was sound. So uh, uh, yep. uh, uh, the natural ventilating okay. roof could be added. And then the next question we get, of course, is related to those big blue slides that you see there. How does the retractable roof work with a slide package? So obviously, you know, the slides are going to go in and out of the retractable space. Um, traditionally, what we do is we don't put a big retractable roof over the entire building at the same height as the cupola or as the water park. What we do is we build a cupola that is the taller section. So I've got a nice photo here that shows, and this is that same project, um, that the cupola is just built around the slide tower itself. So that is at the height that you need it, whatever the height of your um, your uh, tower is. Meanwhile, the rest of the park can be at a lower level. Uh, you know, not that you're air conditioning it, but certainly in the winter, you might be pumping a little bit of heat in. And if you are, you don't want a heat space you don't use, which is all that space over the middle of the, you know, the lazy river and the slides and the wave pool and all that good stuff, right? So. Yes, one of the best thing that I see about this picture is how it exemplifies of taking a negative and make it in a positive. If you look at traditional building uh, structures for indoor water parks, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times the cupola is there, uh, but it feels like you're 
uh, climbing up a silo. <laughs> they may put a window in there every now and then, but the end result is it's really a confined space. Right. Uh, with this structure, you've actually created a, a different venue. Mm -hmm. you can, you're visual looking around uh, the region, but more, heck, I'm looking down in the water park trying to keep t track of my kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you over there, and this is looking <laughs> down through the roof. So, right, right. Take a right. negative and make it a positive. Sure. Um, so then the next question that we get is if your building doesn't look like the, the all aluminum and glass structure, can you add a retractable roof to it? Can we design it in such a way that it, that it aligns with the aesthetic of the architectural team, uh, whom, whomever is designing it? And so the, again, the answer is yes. So in this case, this happens to be in Moscow and this building on the right hand side here um, was uh, designed for the Olympics. And so the aesthetic of the exterior of the building um, was required to be maintained when they renovated this space and wanted to put in a water park and a gym and, and retail and restaurants and all that great stuff that they put in there. Uh, they wanted to make sure that the aesthetic of the building, you know, um, at the grade level was the same, but then right on top is a very large retractable skylight. And when I say skylight, in this case, this thing is 165 feet wide and about 400 feet long. So that's a big skylight. <laughs> but um, I'm gonna show you another example um, of, again, a big skylight, I won't lie, but um, a, another example of a skylight being put onto a, probably a more traditional looking building. So uh, this is your typical steel box and the skylight in this case is about 70 by 150 or so. Yeah. Um, and so it is still, of course, a very big skylight, which gives you all the benefits of that natural ventilation, but um, is literally just dropped onto the top of the roof. So again, I'm oversimplifying. There's some <laughs> structural engineers out there that might might speak differently, but um, the reality is that you can in fact add uh, a skylight to the to the top of the uh, of any kind of a building. Right. So you're get, you're getting the benefit uh, right. that can be provided with an aluminum upper row roof system, mm -hmm. but on the a traditional structural system, which there's reasons that they're, they're needed or selected. Sure. But here, you get the daylighting, you get the natural ventilation, yeah. you get the uh, a sound attenuation, <laughs> all the benefits on it by just putting just a simple 72 by 150 foot, <laughs> rather large, but even a, even a smaller one, those benefits really right. exist. Right. And then the last question that we get, and again, this is just to reference all of the images that most people have been looking at here, is what, what are they made of? Obviously, we've talked about the aluminum bit, um, but what is the rest of it? So, you know, traditionally, people call us and ask about our glass skylights. And in fact, except if it's a restaurant, they're, they're actually not glass. Uh, most of the projects that you see are made with a product called polycarbonate. Polycarbonate is a corrugated, thick, um, plastic and uh, is relatively speaking an in inexpensive solution to a large, large format roof. Uh, traditionally, anything that is ver vertical is glass, re regular glass, a low E glass, but the roof itself is very often made of this polycarbonate material. The alternative product that is also uh, very, very popular is a product called ETFE. ETFE is a sheet-like material which is uh, put into a frame and air is blown into uh, between the several layers of sheets, whether it's two, three, four, multi-wall uh, sort of thickness, and it creates what's um, called a pillow effect. So I've got a couple photos here showing. Both of these are retractable, both of these open, um, all the good things that we've just talked about in the aluminum frame, but the one on the left is the polycarbonate roof, um, and the one on the right, and I picked a nighttime shot just to sort of because during the day people think all the photos are glass, but so that's that's the uh, the the polycarbonate roof, and then the photo on the right is um, the ETFE roof. And, and one thing to understand about these systems is they're lightweight, mm -hmm. and it's the air that's providing the insulating factor. And with even in the northern climates, I've seen snow not a lot of snow buildup, but snow buildup, which shows that the insulation factor is working, which is beneficial, again, on the energy saving side. Right, right. 
So I think that basically sums up our discussion today. We've talked about sort of the four big, big, big issues that really face any water park or, or any entertainment venue, to be perfectly honest. But air quality, corrosion, energy savings, and the big one costs, whether it's cost savings or revenue opportunities, um, all of which are uh, alleviated with an aluminum retractable roof. And of course, as we talked a little bit about today, we've got this extra um, added bonus of, of man, you know, helping to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic, which is affecting every uh, venue across the world. So um, thank you, Daryl, for joining me today. I really appreciate your time and expertise. And um, so wanted to say to everybody, thank you for joining us. If you would like to reach out to myself and, and or Daryl uh, with regards to um, any project that you might be working on, whether it's a new project or adding this to an existing project. Again, my name is Nancy Patterson. I am the Director of Design and Business Development from Open Air. And my name is Daryl Motsky with Raymaker and Associates, uh, aquatic engineering and architectural firm. It's been a pleasure, Nancy. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.